welcome to physics guide channel my name is raju i am physics lecturer in this class we will discuss about rotational kinematics and movement of inertia consider a particle of mass m is rotating about a fixed axis then the line joining the center and the particle makes an angle theta at the center after some time interval in specified direction then theta is called angular displacement look at this picture so here the particle is moving about this axis, about this axis in this direction. Particle of mass m, particle p is moving about this axis. After some time interval, it is making an angle theta at the center, at the center of the circle. Then this theta is called angular displacement. The rate of angular displacement is called angular velocity. It is denoted with omega and omega equal to d theta by dt. Rate of angular velocity is called angular acceleration denoted with alpha. Alpha is equal to d omega by dt. If the particle moving with a constant acceleration, then the rotational kinematic equations are, we know that if a particle is moving in translational motion with a constant acceleration, we know final velocity v is equal to u initial velocity plus acceleration into time and uh, displacement s is equal to ut plus half at square and uh, final velocity v square minus u square is equal to 2as equations of motion in translational motion v square minus u square equal to 2as one more equation yes n is equal to u plus a by 2 into 2n minus 1, 2n minus 1. In the same manner, if the particle is moving in a uh, rotational motion, then rotational kinematic equations are omega equal to omega naught plus alpha t, theta equal to omega naught t plus half alpha t square, omega square minus omega naught square equal to 2 alpha theta and uh, theta n is equal to omega naught plus half alpha 2n minus 1 where omega is the final uh, angular velocity final angular velocity and omega naught is initial angular velocity and alpha is angular acceleration theta n is nth second angular displacement and theta is angular displacement there is an analogy between the translation motion and rotational motion. Let us see. In translation motion, V is denoted final velocity, whereas in rotational motion, omega is final angular velocity. U is initial velocity, omega naught initial angular velocity. S is displacement, theta is angular displacement. A is acceleration, alpha is angular acceleration. M is mass and whereas I is moment of inertia, which is analogous to mass in translational motion. Force F in translational motion, whereas torque tau is used in rotational motion. P, linear momentum, whereas L, angular momentum. These are few terms which we are using in the rotational uh, motion. Moment of inertia. What is moment of inertia? In translational motion, inertia of a body is measured by its mass. What is exactly inertia? Newton's laws explains about the inertia. A body which is at rest tries to be at rest. Okay, A body which is in motion, it uh, remains in its motion unless there is an external force. Which means the body is resist to change its state of motion. This property of body is known as its inertia. Property of a body which resists to change its state of motion is known as its inertia. In translational motion, mass is the measure for the inertia. As mass is more, inertia is more. As mass is less, inertia is less. Sim moment of inertia. Moment of inertia is important concept in defining state of rotation. It is the property of a body rotating or which can rotate about an axis 
and uh, which resists the change in state of rotation, which resists the change in state of rotation. If body is rotating with a constant angular velocity omega, it continues with uh, the same vol uh, velocity omega only, unless some external force, external torque will act on it. If there is an external, external torque, then there is a change in angular velocity. If a body is at rest about an axis of rotation, it is impossible to rotate it in an inertial frame, which means, so if there is no external torque, it remained at a rest, simple. Okay. Moment of inertia is measurement of the resistance of the body to change in its uh, rotational motion. Mi, moment of inertia, Mi means moment of inertia is more than torque should be more to change the state of rotation. Mi is more for a body at rest, requires more torque to rotate. And Mi is more for a body in rotation, requires a more torque to stop rotation. So I hope you understand what is moment of inertia. Again, I'll say moment of inertia is a measure of resistance of the body to change its rotational motion. In translational motion, mass is the measure of inertia. As I said earlier, in rotational motion, moment of inertia is the measure of inertia. Okay. Moment of inertia depends on, very much important this sentence, moment of inertia depends on mass of the body and mass distribution about the axis of rotation. A point mass M, which is rotates about an axis as shown in this picture, about an axis, and the point of mass is at a distance r from the axis. Then the moment of inertia i is defined as mass into square of the distance from the axis to the point mr square. Here i is moment of inertia, m is the mass, and r is the distance from axis of rotation to point mass. i equal to mr square. It's strictly for point mass. Very important. Strictly for point mass. If R is more, then I also more. I means moment of inertia. M is more and uh, moment of inertia also more for this point mass. Let us find moment of inertia of a rigid body. Consider a rigid body of mass M to find its moment of inertia about given axis. Take one elementary particle. So actually, it is a rigid body and no regular shape, a different shape. So therefore, we need to consider a small elemental mass, elementary particle of mass dm, and which is at a distance x from the axis of rotation, which is at a distance x from the axis of rotation. Okay, it is moving in a circular path. It is moving in a circular path. If you consider one more particle of mass dm again, and it is also moves about this axis in a circular path in a circular path. The moment of inertia of the element mass dm, we can find as it is a, just a point particle about the axis, it's a moment of inertia di already we learned in the previous uh, example. Di is equal to dm mass into x square. Distance from the axis, it's a square. dm into x square. To find the moment of inertia of the entire body, we need to sum up all these moment of inertias, di's. So to sum up all these moment of inertias, in our mathematics, we will use integration. Integral di will give you the moment of inertia of this rigid body about that axis. Integral di is equal to integral x square into dm. Integral x square into dm. After doing integration, we will get the moment of inertia of this entire rigid body. For example, moment of inertia of a ring we will find Moment of inertia of a ring. Consider a ring and uh, we need to find the moment of inertia about its axis. About it ax its axis means which is uh, passing through the center of the ring and uh, perpendicular to the plane of the ring. Let us consider a small elemental mass dm and uh, Moment of inertia of this uh, elemental mass uh, will be di. di is equal to dm into r square, which is r distance away from the center uh, axis of rotation. 
And to get the moment of inertia of this L, uh, ring about the axis, I is equal to, we need to integrate di. Integrate di. Then integral di is equal to integral dm into r square. So integration of dm means all such elementary particles, if you sum up, you will get total mass of the ring. Total mass of the ring is m. Then moment of inertia of the ring, i is equal to m r square. Moment of inertia of the ring about its axis is m r square. Second one, moment of inertia of a disk. Okay, a disk of mass m and radius r. To find the moment of inertia of the disk about its axis, we need to consider a small elemental, elemental ring of width dx and radius x, which means this ring whose width is dx and which is x distance away from the axis of rotation. We will find the moment of inertia of this elemental ring and then we will sum up those uh, rings in the disk. We will get the moment of inertia of disk. So it's a mass dm, dm of the uh, mass of the elemental ring, dm is equal to aerial density into area of element. So aerial density means total mass divided by total area into area of the element. Total mass is capital M and total area is pi r square into area of element is 2 pi x into dx. Area of the element is 2 pi x into dx. This element area, if we consider this is the element, a circular strip is our element and whose radius is x and width is dx. Width is dx. If we cut this circle and uh, if we place it on the plane, it looks like a, a rectangle. It looks like a rectangle. And this length of the rectangle will be circumference of this circle, 2 pi x, and its width will be dx. So area of this strip, a rectangular strip is, a, is 2 pi x into dx. That's why area of the element will be 2 pi x into dx. Then mass dm is equal to 2 pi, uh, 2m by r square into x dx. Mi of the element, mi means here moment of inertia. Understand that. Mi of element, uh, that is ring of mass dm is di is equal to dm into x square. dm into x square. Already we learned in the previous example, moment of inertia of a ring whose mass is m is mr, uh, radius is r is mr square. Similarly, Moment of inertia of the elemental ring whose mass is dm and radius is x is di is equal to dm into x squared. Okay. And now di is equal to after doing simplification, after substituting dm value and uh, simplifying, we will get di as 2m in 2m by r square into x cube dx. Okay, i is equal to integral di. If we do do integration for all such elements varying from center from 0 to r. Why 0 to r? If you consider um, here x is variable, if you consider that x is uh, 0, which means the element is at the center of the disk. Element is at the center of the disk. And if you consider x is equal to r by 2, then the element is at a distance this mark, this one. Uh, r, uh, r by 2 distance. Okay. If we consider x is equal to r, then the element is this last strip. So if we add up all these strips, we will get a, a disk. If we add up all these strips, then we will get a disk. I hope you understand. That's why as x is varying 0 to r, then uh, integral of 0 to r, 2m by r square x cubed dx, we have to find to get the moment of inertia of disk. So I is equal to simply this uh, 2m by r square is a, a constant for this integration. Then we can take out of the integration integral 0 to r x cubed dx. And we know in integration, integral x power n dx is equal to, is equal to x power uh, n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. 
So here, same thing we applied x power x cube dx will be x power 4 divided by 4 according to this formula. Okay. So integration limits are 0 to r. So first we need to substitute r upper limit in this integration. In the place of variable, we need to substitute upper limit first and then minus lower limit. Okay. Which is just a r power 4 divided by 4 minus in the place of x we need to substitute 0 0 power 4 divided by 4 0 power 4 is nothing but 0 again so we are not considering this part we are not considering only r by 4 we considered and that is r by 4 we kept here 2m by r square into r by 4 after simplification we will get this 2m r square by 4 and after simplifying it we will get i is equal to m r square by 2. So moment of inertia of a disk about its axis about its axis means axis passing through the center of the disk and perpendicular to the plane of the disk. So about its axis is i is equal to m r square by 2 and moment of inertia of a hollow sphere or shell. Shell of mass m and radius r for finding the hollow sphere or uh, spherical sections or circular arcs, we need to use polar form of the integration. Polar form of the integration is nothing but just nothing but we have to consider variables as uh, angles and then we have to integrate to get the entire moment of inertia. Okay, let us consider. Let us consider element, an element of ring width is r d theta at an angular distance theta from the reference line, which means this is the ring whose width is r d theta and it is this ring, this ring, this is a ring. This ring is at an angular distance, at an angular distance theta from a reference line. This is a reference line and this, this uh, a ring which is angular distance theta away from the reference line. Okay. We consider like that. Okay. We can, we can uh, uh, change this ring from top to bottom or bottom to top. So if the ring is here, okay. If the ring is here, if the ring is here, if the ring is here, if the ring is here and ring is here and ring is here, we will get the entire spherical shell. Therefore, we can consider our element as a ring whose width is r d theta and uh, angular distance theta away from the reference line. The mass of the strip or considered element of mass uh, is dm. So to find the mass of this uh, element, dm is equal to area aerial density of the shell multiplied with area of the element so aerial density is nothing but total mass by total area aerial density is nothing but total mass by total area area of the element so dm is equal to total mass is capital m and the total area of the shell is 4 pi r square so area of the shell means it's a surface area 4 pi r square now area of the element as the element is a circle circular strip as the element is a circular strip whose radius is r cos theta how whose radius is r cos theta i will explain it later just we will see here okay whose radius is r cos theta and the thickness is r uh, d theta as ex i explained in the previous example so 2 pi r cos theta is a circumference of this circle and r d theta is its width will give us the area of the element. Let us find how strip is, uh, since strip is angular distance away from ref, uh, reference line and it's a circular radius r cos theta from from the geometry. I will explain in the next uh, picture. Okay. For radius of a strip, for radius of strip, so this is a strip. We consider only the part of the strip only in the uh, spherical shell. 
in the spherical shell. Look at this picture clearly. So this is the radius of the strip R, small r, and this is a radius capital R. Okay, if we take this right uh, triangle here, in this picture, this is the triangle, and this part is small r, and this part is capital R. The hypotenuse is capital R. And uh, this capital R, this radius, is making an angle theta with the reference line. So according to the geometry, uh, these two lines uh, are parallel to each other. So interior opposite angles, this is theta, and this must be theta only according to the uh, interior opposite angles of a uh, transversal. This will be the transversal. These two are parallel. Okay, this, these two are thetas. Okay, then uh, uh, cos theta in this right angle triangle, cos theta is equal to small r adjacent by hypotenuse capital R. So small r is equal to r cos theta. So small r is nothing but the radius of the strip. Small r is radius of the strip, which is r cos theta. So radius of considered strip is r cos theta. Similarly, how, how can we say uh, its area of the strip? Area of the strip, if we cut this strip and place on the table, then r d theta, whose width is r d theta, and uh, this uh, strip whose length is 2 pi r cos theta, which is circumference of the uh, strip. So it looks like a rectangle. So area of this rectangle is length into breadth. Length is 2 pi r cos theta and breadth is r d theta. So area of the strip also we can find like this. Okay. And now, how can we say that the width of the strip is r, r d theta? Width of the strip is r d theta. How can we say Okay, let us see this picture in detail. So as we see in the previous example, this strip is making an angle, this strip is making an angle theta with the reference line. Okay, and let us consider a small d theta, small d theta to find this strip width, to find this strip width. Now, uh, we can draw this part here. Okay, this is d theta and this is r. And this is the arc. Length of the arc, our arc length is equal to r theta. So theta here, d theta, r d theta. Arc length is nothing but the width of the strip. That's uh, this way, width of the strip is r d theta. Now let us come to the uh, question. Therefore, the dm mass of the elemental strip is m by 4 pi r square density into area of the element area is 2 pi r cos theta into r d theta now dm will be after simplifying this uh, 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 this pi pi will cancel to one table to two table and r square and this r square will cancel out m by 2 into cos theta d theta will be dm. Cos theta d theta is dm. Now, di is equal to dm into radius square r cos theta square. dm into r, r, r cos theta square. Because it is a, uh, a ring, it is a ring. Already we know i is equal to mr square for the ring. So, strip also a ring whose mass is dm, whose radius is r cos theta. Therefore, dm into r cos theta is di. Now, if we integrate it from uh, 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 an angle minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 from the bottom of the uh, shell to the top of the shell, we will get uh, the entire moment of inertia of the shell. We will simplify first of all, simplify the di, di value, substitute dm value, m by 2 cos theta d theta and r square cos square theta. After simplifying di equal to mr square by 2 cos cube d theta. If we integrate it, integrate this di from bottom of the shell to top of the shell, we get a moment of inertia of the shell from the bottom to top. Theta is varying from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. See here, 
this is the shell. This is our axis. This is our axis. Axis of rotation. Shell and axis of rotation. Okay. If this axis, uh, this is a radius, which is making an angle theta with the reference line. Angle theta with the reference line. And this angle is varying from, so when uh, this radius we consider at this point, at this point, and it is minus pi by two. And it is decreasing minus pi by two to decreasing minus pi by four, minus pi by, uh, pi by three, minus pi by four and so on, and decreasing to zero, and then increasing uh, pi by four, pi by uh, three, and uh, so pi by two here, pi by two. So from here to here, if we integrate, at this point, this is the strip. 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 So we are covering the entire shell. Okay, I hope you understand why we consider theta varying from minus pi by two to plus pi by two. Theta is varying from minus pi by two to plus pi by two uh, because we consider the strips from the bottom of the shell to the top of the shell. We covered the entire the shell. We will get the moment of inertia of the entire shell. So I is equal to integration of uh, di, so which is equal to integral minus pi by two to pi by two, mr square by two cos cube theta d theta, which is di. Okay, mr square by two is a integration constant. You can take, an, uh, take out of the integration and cos cube theta d theta is a, a, a your integration part. We will do integration of this cos cube theta d theta. Okay, so to, to do that integration, let us write cos cube theta as a cos square theta into cos theta. There is no uh, difference. Cos cube is nothing but, uh, cos cube theta is nothing but cos square theta into cos theta. So we know the uh, trigonometry, little trigonometry, that cos square theta can be written as one minus uh, sine square theta, theta because cos square theta is equal to one minus sine square theta from the uh, identity, trigonometric identity. So, and then multiply this cos theta d theta to the individual terms, to the one and to this. And then we will get, apply integration to the individual terms. We will get mr square by two is out of the integration and multiplied with the individual term. Integral minus pi by two, pi by two, cos theta d theta. After multiplying cos theta d theta to the one, we will get cos theta d theta. And uh, integral minus pi by minus of, integral minus pi by two to pi by two, sine square theta into cos theta d theta. Okay, next one, mr squared by two, and uh, integration of cos theta d theta is nothing but sine theta, integral, cos theta d theta is equal to sine theta, one of the integration uh, formula, remember it. And uh, integral sine square theta cos theta d theta is sine cube theta by three, sine cube theta by three. We will do that integration here. So integral sine square theta cos theta d theta we are doing here put sine theta as t, then sine square theta is equal to uh, t square, and uh, differentiate sine, sine theta and uh, t, then we will get cos theta d theta equal to d theta. So substitute all these three in the above integration, in this, we will get integral sine square theta is nothing but t square, and cos theta d theta is nothing but d t, d t. So it is becoming a, uh, x power n uh, dx formula, integral x power n dx is equal to x power n plus one by n plus one. So which is t square, integral t square is equal to t cube by three. So t is nothing but sine theta, therefore sine cube theta by three is our integration. I hope you understand why sine square theta cos theta will become sine cube theta, will become sine cube theta by three. And then apply the limits pi by two to minus pi by two. So apply the limits. 
first apply upper limit phi by 2 in the place of theta. Theta is variable here. Sin pi by 2 minus sin cube pi by 2 by 3. And uh, next, uh, next we need to apply minus pi by 2. Before applying minus pi by 2, this is a sub substitution of upper limit. Okay. And minus substitute the lower limit wherever uh, variable is there, wherever theta is there. Lower limit is min minus pi by 2. So we are substituting sine of minus pi by 2. Minus sine of sine cube minus pi by 2 here. Minus pi by 2 here and divided by 3. Okay. Now simplify all these things. Sine pi by 2 is 1. And uh, sine cube pi, sine pi by 2 is 1. 1 cube is uh, again 1. 1 by 3 we will get here. And sine minus pi by 2 is minus 1. And uh, sine cube of uh, minus pi by 2 is uh, again minus 1, minus 1 by 3, we will get minus 1 by 3. And this minus into minus, it will become plus and uh, uh, minus into plus. Okay, here, because it is a plus, minus into plus will be minus, minus we will get mr square into mr square by 2 into 1 minus 1 by 3 minus into minus plus 1 and minus into plus because these two together is a plus minus into plus we will get minus minus 1 by 3 after simplifying after doing some algebra simplification mr square by 2 uh, into 2 minus 2 by 3. This is 1 plus 1, 2 minus 1 by 3, minus 1 by 3, minus 2 by 3. And do simplification. And 3 twos are 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. 4 by 3. So 2 1 table, 2 2 table, 2 by 3. So finally, we get the moment of inertia of the shell as 2 by 3 mr square. Moment of inertia of the shell is 2 by 3 mr square. Now, next we will find the moment of inertia of the sphere, solid sphere. Moment of inertia of a solid sphere. Solid sphere of mass m and radius r. To find its uh, moment of inertia, let us consider uh, a disk of a thickness dx and x distance away from the center of the sphere. Look at this uh, sphere. We have to consider a disk circular disk which is at a distance x from the center of the sphere x distance from the center of the sphere and the thickness of the disk is dx dx is the thickness of the disk this is the dx and radius of the sphere is r and its mass is m we know and the radius of the disk is, disk is small r from this right right angle to triangle if we take out this strip is it is a, a right angle triangle from this right angle triangle we can find r is equal to root over r square minus x square from the pythagoras theorem so uh, radius of the disk is r is equal to root over r square minus x square capital r square which is the radius of the sphere now mass of the disk is let us say dm to find the mass of the disk we know that dm is equal to volume density of the sphere multiplied with volume of the element. So volume density of the sphere is nothing but total mass by total volume into volume of the element. So here dm is equal to m total mass and total volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube. It is a sphere. 4 by 3 pi r cube is a 4 by 3 pi r cube is it's a, uh, it's a volume. Next, into volume of the element. Volume of the element is actually as a, as a disk, but it, it is having some small thickness. So it looks like a cylinder, cylinder of thickness. I will draw like this so that you can understand. Cylinder of thickness, dx, and radius is smaller. Radius is smaller. Therefore, its volume is uh, base area. So pi r squared, pi r squared into its height, height is into dx. So pi r, r is nothing but root over r square minus x square. Just now we der uh, derived here, pi into root over r square minus x square whole square into dx. This is a dm value. Simplify this dm. 
then after simplification of the dm we will get a 3m by 4 pi sorry 3m by 4 r cube r square minus x square dx because this pi and this pi will cancel out so now we will find the moment of inertia of the disk okay that small element is a disk whose moment of inertia disk moment of inertia previously we learned mr square by 2 mr square by 2 moment of inertia of the disk di is equal to dm into r square divided by 2 whose mass is dm and uh, radius is root over r square minus x square x. okay therefore we will get a di after substituting dm and simplifying it so substituted dm here and uh, square of this root over r square minus x square is r square minus just x square simplify it then we will get a di as 3m by 4 uh, sorry 3m by 8 r cube and uh, r square minus x square whole square this r square minus x square into r square minus x square will be r square minus x square whole square 4 into 3 is uh, 4 into 2 is 8 and therefore 3m by 8 r cube into r square minus x square 1 square into dx now expand r square minus x square uh, which is a, a plus b whole square formula so after explanation a plus b whole square formula only a is this and b is this. So, uh, this so instead of a plus b a minus b we will take because here a minus b is there a minus b whole square is equal to a square a square plus b square plus 2ab. So a square, b square. So as it is minus, sorry, as it is minus 2ab, so minus 2 into r square x square into dx. After simplifying uh, this terms, we will get di. di is this. This is our di. So, moment of inertia of the entire sphere, I is equal to integration of this di, integration of this di, and uh, uh, integration limits are varying from minus r to r. So, here, what is uh, variable? Variable is this x. So, x is variable. This is our sphere. And if we consider x, uh, is at a distance r minus r from the center of the sphere, we will get the disk here, small disk, elemental disk. x is somewhere here, we will let's get the disk, elemental disk here. If we consider x is here from the center, then we will get the disk here. And if the center uh, x is equal to 0, then we will get the disk here. x is equal to some positive value, so the disk is here. And then the x is equal to here, the disk is here. x is equal to here, disk is here. The x is equal to plus r, disk is here. Which means we are covering the entire sphere, solid sphere. If we join, sum up all these disks, we will get the sphere. That's why x is varying from minus r to r. Minus r to no. So then minus r to r, 3m by 8 r cube, r power 4 plus x power 4 minus 2 r square x square into dx. x is varying from minus r to plus r from bottom of sphere to top. Now do the simplification, in, uh, apply the integration to the individual terms. 3m by 8 r cube is a constant. We can take out of the integration. And then individual terms, integral minus r to r, r power 4 dx, integral minus r to r, x power 4 dx, minus integral minus r to r, 2r square x square dx. Just to be applied integration to the individual terms. That's it. After doing the integration for the first term, we will get r power 4 into x and minus r to r are the limits. And the second uh, uh, integration will be x power 5 by 5 uh, minus r to r minus 2r square as 2r square is a constant in the integration. And the x square integration will be x cube by 3 and which is varying from minus r to r integration limits. After substituting the integration limits, we will get r power 4 into, uh, in the place of x, we need to substitute r. 
minus while you are substituting lower limit you need to keep minus that's why we kept here minus okay minus minus r and similarly for this term r power 5 by 5 minus minus r power 5 by 10 again minus 2 r square substitute plus r in the place of x cube in the place of x and then r cube by 3 minus and substitute minus r uh, in the place of x so minus r cube by 3 and simplify all these terms you will get r power 4 into 2r plus 2r power 5 by 5 minus 2r power uh, r square into 2r cube which is 4 r power 5 by 3 simplify all these terms just normal uh, algebra 2r square 2r square 2r square by 5 sorry sorry 2r power 5 plus 2r power 5 by 5 minus 4r power 5 by 3 and r power 5 you can take out of the these terms these three terms common r power 5 and remaining we are doing the lcm just adding just numbers 2 into 15 is 30 plus uh, 2 into 3 is 6 and minus 4 into 5 is 20 so 30 minus 20 is 10 10 plus 6 is 16 so 16 is the numerator 15 is the denominator denominator uh, so 3m uh, r power 5 and r cube we will cancel out and then we will get r square in the numerator 3m r square by 8 8 1 table 8 uh, 2 table 3 1 table 3 5 table then 2 by 5 i is equal to 2 by 5 m r square so moment of inertia of uh, solid sphere i is equal to 2 by 5 m r square if you consider disk as elemental we do like this okay so another alternate method is there to find the moment of inertia of the solid sphere instead of considering uh disc as an element we will consider a shell a shell whose radius is x whose thickness whose radius is x and whose thickness is dx if we consider a shell let us consider a shell of radius x and thickness dx and mass of the shell is dm. We will find the mass of the shell dm and then we will do the small, uh, all the steps are repeated again and again in previous examples and this example. Okay, we will do few more examples also to understand how to find the moment of inertia in the next class. Anyway, we will continue this. dm is equal to density of the sphere into volume of the element. Density of the sphere is nothing but total mass by total volume. M by 4 by 3 pi r cube. Now, volume of the element, it is a shell whose surface area is 4 pi x square, whose thickness is a dx. So, surface area into thickness will give you the volume of the shell. So, dm is equal to 3m by r cube. So, 4 pi, 4 pi will cancel. 3m by r cube x square into dx is a dm. Now, now di moment of inertia of the shell. Already we found previously that a shell of mass m whose radius is r moment of inertia of the shell about its axis is 2 by 3 2 by 3 m r square. The same formula we applied here. Here the element is a shell. Therefore, dA of the shell is equal to 2 by 3 into its mass, dm, its radius, x square. Okay. So, if we integrate this shell uh, from 0 to r, 0 to r means, so if the radius, this is a sphere. So, if the radius of the shell is 0, so the, now the shell is at the center. If the radius of the shell is little more, more than the 0, so the shell is somewhere here. Shell is somewhere here. If we increase the radius, if they increase the radius, if we increase the radius, if we increase the radius, and so on. If the radius of the shell is r, then the shell is at this point. So we covering the entire sphere. So therefore, this x is varying from zero to r. So integral zero to r di di is two by three dm x square. Now substitute the dm value, x is varying from 0 to r and uh, dm value is just dm value I'm substituting here, uh, 
थ्री बाई एम आर क्यूब एक्स पावर फोर डी एक्स पावर फोर डी एक्स आफ्टर मल्टीप्लाइंग विथ एक्स स्क्वायर डायरेक्टली आई एम राइटिंग ओके एंड दिस थिंग्स टू दिस थ्री थ्री विल गेट कैंसिल टू इन टू एम टू एम बाई आर क्यूब इज आउट ऑफ द इंटीग्रेशन इंटीग्रल जीरो टू आर एक्स पावर फोर डी एक्स नाउ द इंटीग्रल जीरो इंटीग्रल जीरो टू आर एक्स पावर फोर डी एक्स विल बी एक्स पावर फाइव बाई फाइव एंड जीरो टू आर द इंटीग्रेशन लिमिट्स एंड टू एम बाई आर क्यूब इज जस्ट कॉन्स्टेंट एज इट इज टू एम बाई आर क्यूब सब्सिट्यूट आर इन द प्लेस ऑफ एक्स आर पावर फाइव बाई फाइव एंड जीरो इन द प्लेस ऑफ एक्स इट विल बी यूल गेट जीरो ओनली सो नो नीड टू कंसिडर दैट टर्म देन मूवमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया इज टू बाई फाइव सो आर क्यूब हियर Cancel with the r power phi remaining is r square. So two by phi m r square is the moment of inertia of the solid sphere. This way we consider uh, we can find the moment of inertia of some few three D objects. In any three D object, only one thing you need to find. First of all, you need to consider is element such a way that if you integrate that element, you will get the entire board. that way you need to consider a simplest element simple element okay and we have to find its mass dm mass dm is equal to charge uh, mass density so that mass density may be linear mass density or aerial mass density or volume mass density depending upon the element you consider into element uh, uh, length or element area or element volume we will get the dm and find di you write di is equal to dm into uh, i mean depending upon the element we will get uh, uh, this di value dm into um, length square okay radius square or dm into um, radius square by 2 so depending upon the element we consider whether the element is a ring whether the element is a disk whether the element is a shell depending upon that we will get this di value after that we have to integrate it from the proper proper limits uh, lower limit lower limit and upper limit okay so this lower limit and upper limit if we take uh, properly then we will get uh, after doing integration we will get the moment of inertia of the solid body